Today, I'll share three easy little habits that made me a better football player. And you can do them too. Let's go. Yeah, you heard that right. Three little easy habits that I forced myself to learn and adapt to that actually made a really big difference for me on the pitch. And let me be honest with you guys, if I can do it, then so can you. So if you want to improve as a player, make sure you subscribe to the channel with the notification. <laughs> I mean, what am I getting? Subscribing alone won't make you a better player. But if you subscribe and watch our tutorials and actually go to the pitch and train all the advice that we give you all the time, you might actually just improve down the line. So with that said, let's get to it. So the first thing I decided to force myself to learn was that I needed to look more around when I didn't have the ball. See, the thing is that professional players, they do this all the time. They scan the pitch and their surroundings, looking at where the opponents are, looking at where the teammates are, so they know exactly what they can do if the ball comes to them right in this moment. And before I learned this, I'm not sure what I was thinking when I was on the pitch, but it certainly wasn't what I was gonna do if the ball came to me right now. So what I did was I simply just started forcing myself to think about it and do it every time I went to a training session or if I had a good day mentally in a match. And you know what happened? Well, the more I did it, the more I forced myself to do it, the more naturally it actually became and the less I had to think about it. So you could say that over time, it became a habit. So now I can actually feel the difference that it makes that I know what my options are around me before I get the ball. Let's say I have a teammate passing to me, Heb. I just look around and now that means that I can focus on my first touch or making a pass to another teammate or simply by beating the defender because I know what my surroundings are. And that is a lot better than if I have a teammate over there, I'm just thinking, oh, okay. And all of a sudden the ball is coming to me. I have no clue what I want to do. So hep, I'm just here, boom. Now I get the ball and now I have to look up and decide what to do. It takes a little bit longer time and the defender might just be closing me down. So force yourself to look up, look around you. So you've already made halfway at least a decision of what you can do when you receive the pass. Another habit that I realized made a big change, more or less immediately, was that I started taking my match preparations seriously. And you should too. And no, I don't mean that you should, you know, ditch all the good food and drinks and all the fun stuff and basically restrict yourself because that would suck and football shouldn't suck. What I'm saying is that to me, I realized that getting a good night's sleep the day before a match and stretching well every morning or at least after every training session and generally just eating well before a match to get some nice carbs into my body and fueling it up well just made a huge difference. So you might have to sacrifice that big bowl of Friday candy or you know going out with your friends the night before a match just so you're ready in your head and your body. And that to me made a huge difference. And I guess if you want to be the best version of yourself, it takes sacrifice. But if you take it seriously, it definitely pays off. And finally, I decided to develop a higher willingness to run. And I know now that I say it, it sounds completely stupid because it's kind of a, like a base experience for football players that they just run a lot and all the time, right? But the thing was that before I developed this habit, I had a tendency to you know, kind of conserve my energy a little bit. And especially if I was tired, I didn't want to make those extra deep runs. But the thing is, one day it just clicked for me. And I realized that if I make the extra deep runs, I just constantly make myself available either to get the ball in a better position or if nothing else, then just to open up space behind me and causing chaos in the defense. If I did that, I would be a better player because that would make me a bigger threat. Also, of course, tracking back to help out defending also made me more reliable, I would say, because if you make that extra run, even though it's not your responsibility, if you track back because the team needs it, that gave me a boost, especially also because of how my teammates saw me. And I know you might be tired, but let's be honest, guys, 
a football player. A match is only 90 minutes and you can chill afterwards for, for almost a full week. So go out there, just think about, can I make this run? Can I make a difference making this run? And then after the match, I guarantee you, it's a lot more satisfying. Because everyone hates you sitting on the couch thinking, I could have done more. So do more. So there you have it, my friends. Three habits that I forced myself to learn and adapt that actually made me a better player. And maybe you can use some of the same things that I did. Maybe you also already have these things covered. But either way, you can use this as an inspiration, a reminder to constantly reevaluate yourself as a player so you can go and improve. Because after all, that's what it's all about. That's what the best do. Where can I improve? And then they go and do something about it. So go and do that. But guys, what should we teach you next? Let us know in the comment section as always down below. Maybe go and upgrade your boot game via the link to unisports.com right over there as always. Make sure you subscribe to the channel with the notifications on. And if you want to improve even further as a football player, there's a great playlist right down there that you should totally go and watch. And with those words, I'll be signing off. A cheerio.